as always, we are testing from the get-go. In fact, at the point of starting these tests, I don't know the price of this 56 mil, nor the release date. Of course, we know all of that now. And before I put my final thoughts together, I will know the price because I think that is very important to the success of this lens. Now, if it turns out to be anything like the 35 mil, I actually think that this 56 will be more appealing. Yeah, but we've got a long road to go to find out if it's really worth it. So next up, we're gonna crack open this box. I mean, of course, it's already been cracked open, but you'll be seeing my initial impressions as I cracked it open for the first time. We're gonna see what's what, and then always we'll get on with the sample. So yeah, let's crack on with this. <laughs> That's the test done, I think. As always, we've got instruction manual and warranty card. This one comes with a nice thick bit of protective foam. We've got that cool lens hood again, nice. And the lens itself, which naturally is very familiar if you've seen or used the 35 mil. So snap cap, 52 mil thread, 50 centimeter minimum focusing. Let's pop that hood on there. Now the cap at the back has that firmware port, the USB port for firmware update. Now, if I put this side by side with the 35 mil, you'll see just how similar they are. Now the 56 mil weighs 199 grams with the hood and without the caps. STM focusing, again, no, is that on? No aperture ring, but yeah, 84 mil full frame equivalent, 28 degree field of view. So there's nine diaphragm blades, 10 elements, nine groups. We're gonna see how all that glass plays along next. I did miss the aperturing more this time because I lost a few split second moments having been stuck down for some shots, then spotting another shot elsewhere and not being able to get to F1.8 quick enough before the scene had changed. Also, the lack of weather sealing was put to the test somewhat, but it wasn't a huge deal. As you can see, we survived a rather rainy day out in Liverpool, like with the previous lens in the lineup, let's say. I really like the lens hood. You just can't use a lens cap while the hood is in place. It's a bit of a pain, but overall build and handling after some use and abuse, give or take the flaws, not too bad. Now the autofocus performance is better than the 35 mil. As you'll see in a moment, it's a hair or so slow to catch focus, but it's actually pretty accurate. Face detection though could do with a tweak, but generally, it all works pretty well.
as it's a cheap, cheap lens. There's no real surprises when it comes to image quality, but sharpness is actually pretty good in the center and decent at the edges. But the best doesn't come until you're around f 5.6. Contrast is good and you, you know, you can get some decent detail in the shadow areas and colors aren't too bad either. It's pretty faithful and even on a dull rainy day you can pick out the tones and bring an image to life. So, you know, not bad at all on that front. Vignetting is present wide open and fringing is definitely a bit of a problem. You know, sometimes the lens gives me that feeling that, you know, it's got that character found in some of the low end manual focus lenses that we've tested over the years. Finally, Barker can be a bit busy, a bit of a mush, but it's not that bad. What do you reckon? So when it comes to summarizing the image quality, it's not the worst out there, but I'm afraid it, it will all come down to the cost factor with this one. The very nearest equivalent is the Viltrox 56mm f1.7. Doesn't focus quite as close and a touch heavier, but there's not much in it. Then there's the Maker 55mm f1.4, which comes in at around £157. Has an aperture ring, MFAF switch, as well as a slightly faster aperture, but doesn't focus as close. So if you can't stretch the bike from the next level up, the Sigma or Viltrox f1.4 lenses, for example, this TT Artisan 56mm lens is worth a look, maybe to travel with if you're not looking to spend that extra £100 or, you know, you'd prefer to put that money to a flight or a day out to get out and shoot somewhere new. And shooting somewhere new can be a lot more inspirational than splashing out loads of money on gear anyway. So get out and shoot. But if you get a chance to try this one out, let us know what you think. I'll see you soon.